Hello everyone, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. So today we have a case that is quite disturbing. Imagine being left with a roommate who is clearly demon possessed. Like, where does that really leave you? Stay woke. Victoria Good was born on October 4th, 1995 in Oklahoma City. She was one of three siblings and was known to be very family oriented, bubbly and ambitious. Victoria came from a highly respected family and they always made sure to love and encourage her to just really follow her dreams. In 2014, Victoria graduated from John Marshall High School. She then attended Redlands Community College for a year. And even though she was excited to start college, Victoria always had a passion for fashion, which was evident from her middle school days when she designed a backpack made from a Captain Crunch cereal box. She was known to have a creative spirit and you really couldn't ignore that about her like her parents was just amazed at how talented Victoria was and she she honestly couldn't ignore that passion that she had. Victoria was working at a woman's clothing store called Forever 21. We all know Forever 21 and at this store she styled mannequins and staged windows displays. Although Victoria liked her job she knew she wanted to do so much more. Victoria always had an eye for fashion and styling, but her true passion as well was modeling. However, she didn't pursue it until her brother passed away in 2015. While her brother was alive, he always encouraged her to pursue high fashion modeling, as he believed she had the beauty and charisma for it. After her brother's passing, Victoria family supported her decision to pursue a career in modeling and she knew she had to work hard to make her dream a reality. So Victoria first signed with Blink Modeling Agency in Oklahoma City, which was a major stepping stone for her to kick off her modeling career. She was offered a few modeling jobs in Oklahoma City, but we all know New York is where you can really take your career to the next level when it comes to fashion, modeling, just anything in that world. So she wanted to be signed with big name agencies in New York. She started to create a portfolio and sent it to numerous agencies in New York City. After reaching out to different agencies, Victoria finally received exciting news about a potential offer. So during New York Fashion Week, Victoria got a call to come to New York for a casting call but was actually turned down, which made her feel a bit just sad for a while, but she kept moving forward and stayed motivated. We all know that modeling, it's very competitive. And honestly, y'all, I don't know about you, but I used to watch America's Next Top Model a lot. And we all know that when it comes to modeling, it's competitive. Like models, they go through a lot. Things are always changing. You're always competing with the next. So, I can see why at first it's very disheartening because you're always being rejected or you know the next girl might have what you don't have but this really did not stop Victoria like she kept on pushing herself and she stayed dedicated to her craft. After her mom and family really encouraged Victoria to just keep going and buckle down over time Victoria made long lasting friends in the process. And she made a lot of friends in the modeling industry and started to attend private castings to be discovered. And we all know the saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So according to her family, she started to walk in runways and attendees were blown away by her walk, confidence, boldness, and honestly, pure beauty. Global New York Fashion Week called her back to walk for them in her first show. After her first show, she knew that she wanted to pursue modeling full time and she was going to stay in New York. So honestly, she kind of stopped with school and she really devoted her time into modeling because now at this point she knew that she could make it. Because Victoria started to build connections and friendships in the industry, the friends she met along the way offered her room and board so she could attend castings. 
When she became familiar with New York, she decided to stay permanently. She moved into a model home with other models and worked with different promoters who booked the models for various shows around New York. So clearly Victoria was booked and busy like she was on her hustle, she was on her A game. But the pandemic hit around 2020 and this is when things started to really slow down for Victoria. The whole world was shut down, even New York was shut down for months, making it extremely hard for Victoria to find modeling jobs. So she then started to work for Delta Airlines to support her lifestyle. She had to get a nine to five because things were slow. When COVID happened, a lot of businesses shut down. People were very much concerned about being next to each other. So there was just a lot of social distancing going on and when you're a model you have to be around other people you're around photographers hairstylists makeup artists wardrobe stylists and not to mention you work alongside other models as well at times so she wasn't getting any work because things just slow down victoria also relocated multiple times she did have an apartment in the city and then relocated again to a town home during the season of her life but she eventually went to live at the project renewal new providence woman's shelter now of course this place was temporary like i said you know this was during covid so times were rough and she made plans to just stay there for a little while while she got back on her feet. Everyone comes from, you know, humble beginnings. So Victoria's family, they did tell her that, hey, you could come back home and get support from us. Like we're your family. We understand that right now, you know, it's a tough time. Just come home, we got you. But Victoria really wanted to stand on her own two feet and just be independent. She knew that, you know, this was the season that was, only temporary it was only for a moment so she stayed at the shelter going back and forth to work and that's when she met her roommate Charmaine Crossman Charmaine Crossman was a 42 year old from Jamaica now y'all there's no information online about Charmaine only like her social media accounts now while I was scrolling through her social media accounts <laughs> it's clear as day that Charmaine really liked being in front of the camera. You could tell that she was a bit seductive. I don't know if she had any family in the US or what type of career she had. All I know is that sis loved to twerk <laughs> and she stayed on TikTok for the most part. Now the dynamic between Charmaine and Victoria was a bit off. The two were roommates for about two months and they didn't get along like at all. Victoria often expressed to her family that Charmaine will have conversations with the devil. Literally she would be in the corner of the room just speaking to herself and that made Charmaine feel very much uneasy. I don't know about y'all. I mean if I was around someone that was constantly talking to themselves and you know they're mentioning the devil and demons I'm gonna make sure I distance myself. Victoria often would complain to the staff though at Project Renewal Shelter if she could just change her room or get a new roommate, but they often ignored her request. We also have to keep in mind too that this is a shelter based in the city of New York and it is considered to be a low barrier shelter so it's open 24 7 and people come and go as they please you know so there's all different types of people that's in the shelter. So I don't know if the staff were super busy or what, but I feel like if someone is complaining that they feel unsafe with a roommate, that's something you really, really shouldn't ignore. After months of Victoria feeling extremely uncomfortable around Charmaine and requesting to receive a new roommate, Victoria and Charmaine had a huge altercation that led to Victoria losing her life. On December 16th, during the evening at Project General Homeless Shelter, Victoria was smoking and listening to music in the room with a friend. Charmaine told her to turn the music down because it was too loud. But Victoria continued to listen to her music. Charmaine then proceeded to spray air freshener in Victoria's face because she wanted her to turn the music down. 
So then Victoria threw a blanket at Charmaine and they began to fight. At this point, the two is throwing punches. Charmaine then grabs a knife out and chases Victoria. So at this point, the two, they're throwing hands. But then Charmaine then grabs a knife and this is when the energy kind of switched. You could tell that Victoria wasn't trying to fight anymore. She actually was running away because now there's a weapon involved. Victoria then ran to the laundry room and Charmaine caught up to Victoria and stabbed her in the eyes, chest, and her left arm. After Charmaine attacked Victoria, she ran out of the shelter. She was captured on CCTV footage, throwing away the knife, and she was also seen using public transportation to get away. Police alerted everyone in the city about how dangerous Charmaine was. Victoria, however, was rushed to the hospital where she later died. Charmaine eventually turned herself in after four days for murdering Victoria. She was later charged with second degree murder. Tonight, police know who they're looking for. What we're still trying to figure out is how a woman was murdered in a secured shelter with the sole purpose of keeping vulnerable women safe. Uh, apparently, someone was stabbed. We don't officially know if they were murdered. The Project Renewal New Providence Women's Shelter on East 45th Street in Manhattan is now the site of NYPD's latest murder investigation. Police say Friday night, just before 10, 27-year-old Victoria Good was stabbed multiple times on the sixth floor by 42-year-old Charmaine Crossman, seen here in photos captured by surveillance video at a subway station. It's not clear if she is a shelter resident or her relationship to Good. Although Good was rushed to the hospital. She did not survive the attack. Do you feel safe there? One shelter resident I spoke to said she saw the blood herself Friday night, but was undisturbed by the incident. Yeah, yeah, that's something personal that happened. It's nothing to do with the, with the system. But it has everything to do with New York City's homeless system, according to resident Yamani Vasquez, who's lived at New Providence for three months. She was candid about the slashing, saying she hasn't felt secure since arriving. I personally don't feel safe in this facility. It could have been me. Could have, been, could have very well been me. It's a common sentiment shared among some of New York City's homeless population who find the streets more welcoming than the housing provided by the Department of Homeless Services, which told me that on-site, around-the-clock security is provided at each site. Our shelters are not safe. They are not places where people want to live. According to new data obtained by the New York Daily News, around 70% of homeless individuals who have been moved into shelters have left within a week of being Admitted. And it's understandable why there's so many people on the street. Victoria's family was devastated. They honestly could not wrap their heads around her murder. On December 8th, 2022, Damien, Victoria's brother, created a GoFund account to help with funeral arrangements. After the Good family was able to say their goodbyes and lay Victoria to rest, they still felt like justice needed to be served. So on August 8th, 2023, the Good family filed a lawsuit against the city of New York. The New York City Department of Homeless Shelters, they felt like Project Renewal New Providence Women's Shelter was extremely careless and did nothing to prevent Victoria's murder. They felt like they just ignored Victoria after she filed a complaint several times to change her room or get a new roommate to avoid Charmaine. On the other hand though, Project Renewal doesn't feel like they should be held responsible for Victoria's death. The Good family till this day is seeking accountability right now. Um, I highly encourage y'all to keep them in your prayers. The situation is still sad because Victoria honestly lost her life for no reason. It's clear that Charmaine was a bit hinged and possibly jealous of Victoria. And for her to kill Victoria out of rage like that is honestly just devastating. I'm really starting to realize we have to be alert at all times and stay prayed up because times are getting darker and darker as we speak. And let's just say Victoria did survive this. 
Charmaine stabbed Victoria in her eyes, cut up her body, and modeling was something that she was extremely passionate about. So Charmaine would have really caused some damage for Victoria and really would have traumatized her. Either way it goes, I am happy that the Good family received justice, but I do feel like the shelter should also take some accountability. But half of me feels like I don't want to say they don't care, but they probably don't care. They probably feel like we're not responsible for that. We have tons of hundreds of people coming in, coming out, and you're at the shelter at your own risk. But if I'm staying at the shelter and I'm telling you like, hey, this person, I feel, I feel unsafe. This person is making me, you know, scared and I'm threatened. Then I feel like at some point it takes... It takes nothing but two seconds to place me in another shelter room. So I don't know. I just hope that the Good family is able to receive some sort of justice regarding that as well. Um, this case is still very much fresh. So keep them in your prayers, y'all. These families, they watch my videos. They stay in contact. So definitely just send your prayers over to them. Father God, we all come together and we just ask you, Lord God, for your peace and your comfort for the good family. We ask you, Father Lord God, that you're able to just lead them and guide them during this time, especially during the times when they're confused and they don't know what else to do. I know, Father Lord God, that you're a God of just, just goodness. I ask you, Father Lord God, that you're able to just provide what this family needs during this time. I ask you, Father Lord God, to also keep us protected, keep us guided, keep us safe, because times right now, it's, it's rough. So I ask you, Father Lord God, to just cover us with your blood, cover our children, cover us while we're going to work, while we're going to school, while we're traveling, because we never know who we're going to encounter that day. So I ask you, Father Lord God, to keep us under your wings so that we won't fear the terrors of night. We won't fear other people, that we're grounded and always safe under you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep the good family in your prayers. Please be cautious about where you're going, who you're interacting with. And just stay safe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay woke.